Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate the opportunity of being here. My name is Joel saint -Cilien. I will never ask you to pronounce my last name. And I am a filmmaker. So actually today, this is what you are going to get, the opinion of a filmmaker. Don't take it personal, please. Um, I am a filmmaker and I've been working on a lot of projects, but I am treating this specific documentary as the single most important project for our children and the generation of parents who are raising them. Why am I saying this? Well, I was born in France, Paris. I was there for 20 years of my life. And then I moved here to the United States. And then I've been here for 20 years of my life. So now you teachers, you do the math, you know how old I am. Shh. Shh. Okay. Now, although those two countries could not be any more different, when it comes to the education system, there's one thing, in my opinion, that they have in common. They both have failed to inspire me. Now, there is a say that I would hear growing up, being in both those countries. The experience when I was a kid, of course, going to school, and then coming here and working after school in all these different public schools uh, for the better part of the last 10 years. There's a say that you hear a lot from educators, whether they mean it or not, is that you can be anything that you want to in the world if you set your mind to it. And this sentence never resonated to me until I turned 36 years old. And that's when I set foot for the first time in Casa Middle School. You could say I took my time. Now why? What, what is it about Casa Middle School that really changed my mind? Well, I felt like every time I would set foot in this establishment, I was being celebrated on a personal level. And then I would look around, and I felt like every single body was getting the same treatment. From the teachers, to the janitor, to the security, and most importantly, the children. And he would show. The principal of Casa Middle School, Jamal Bowman, is constantly reinventing himself. Now, why is he doing that? Well, it's because he gets a different set of kids every year. And every year, and every kids have a different mind. And he had made it his mission, really, to make sure that he adjusts so he could fit the need of those kids instead of doing it the other way around, like I see it happening time and time again. Now, I've been working in public school long enough to know it's easier said than done. And this is what makes this story so exceptional to me because it makes it so easy to get it done. Now, to give you a little more context, I started working at Casa Middle School back in 2012. Okay, walked into school uh, with my former business partner, Chad Harper from Hip Hop Saves Lives. Great organization, you guys should check it out. And Chad Harper had written a curriculum. Now the curriculum was that we would walk in the class and we would teach those kids different lessons about social justice, about issues happening locally and around the world. And then we would let the kid express what they've learned through an art form of their choosing. So some of them like to dance, some of them like to sing, some of them like to rhyme, some of them like to draw, some of them like to video, some of them like to produce. So we would let them do all of that and bring their mind together to create one single project. And that project we would send to an organization that is working towards finding a solution to resolve the issues that we addressed in that specific project. And what do you know, the kids loved it. The kids learned a lot. The kids not only were students, but they were also teachers. And so when something works so well, and it spilled over, of course, in everything else. Self-confidence, um, walk in the class, grades went up, attendance went up. 
everything went up. So what do you do when something works so well? You give them more, right? So that's what Chad Harper did, okay? I remember that day like it was yesterday. Principal Bowman was minding his business, watching the kid during recess, and we just approached him. And we told Bowman, we said, listen, this is working. The kids need more. He looked at us and he said, listen, you guys are not full-time educators, and he walked away. So here we were now, teaching a class of creative art, right between the class of science and the class of ELA. And it worked so well. And this is the type of risk that this man is taking. This is, this is the type of risk that this man is taking to meet the needs of his children. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a lot of hip hop reference in this documentary. Now, anybody knows the story of hip hop, its origin? Okay. Cool. Well, I'm telling this story because it involved the youth again. Well, hip hop rose during the 70s in the South Bronx, where basically every corner of every street was plagued with violence. Gangs everywhere. You could not work somewhere that you didn't belong. Now those kids on the streets, they were being vilified. They were being neglected. They didn't have a voice. So what did they do? They decided to take matter in their own hand. This is the genius of a young mind. We like dancing. But we don't have facilities. You don't want to give us facilities. What are we going to do? We're going to take cardboards. We're going to put it on the streets. There goes our dance floor. Oh, you know what? We want to make some music. But not necessarily this instrument that you want to teach us. So we're going to make our own. Two turntables. He became DJ. We're not necessarily inspired that's cool and what you're teaching us. I know you call us dumb. What are we going to do? We're going to challenge ourselves in MC battles. We're going to challenge ourselves lyrically until we become the best. Most of these kids were part of a gang and they turned away from that violence and they took, they created hip hop as an alternative to that gang violence instead of shooting each other. Now there they were battling each other. May the, be the best man win. Hip hop was about peace, love, unity, and having fun. And then the big corporates took over. And it, become, it became one big size fit all. You gotta rap about that. You gotta say that in your song. You gotta dub it down. You gotta make money. Now, I don't know about you, but I see a lot of similarities in the education system. Again, just the opinion of a filmmaker. But that's not the story of CASA. Now, I begin my speech by saying, that this is the most important project for our children. Because as a new father, as a father of a new baby that was born last July, I want to be able to look at my daughter and tell her, you can be anything that you want to if you set your mind to it. And I want to believe it first before I can make, it, make her believe. This is a story that needs to be told. And we need your help to join it. We launched an Indiegogo campaign today. And for anybody that is inspired by this story, I would like for all of you to take out your cell phone Check out the link, click on it, and support it. We would like some money. Money is good. If you can't,
please share it. Spread the word. This is something that works. And it's been proven. Not only in the number, but in the self-esteem of the children, the parents, and the teachers. Thank you for your time.